Okay, so let's have a look at an overview of the task 2 procedure. So step 1, read the task. Decide if it's an argument or discussion or a mixed type of task. In an argument task, you will see these words here, agree or disagree or something similar. So you have to basically argue a side. In a discussion essay, you are not really asked for your opinion on the matter. You don't need to take a side. Uh, in this example, we can see they ask you for reasons and possible solutions. And in a mixed type essay, you get a little bit of both. So in this example, we see the question, why is this? And then you need to take a side. Is it positive or is it negative? And it is important to know what kind of task you're dealing with because this is going to affect this body, the structure of your essay later on. Okay, step two, read the task again. This is important. It's a, it's a very basic but important starting point. So if it is an argument essay, you need to decide if it has requirement one to argue your opinion or requirement two to argue both sides and then give your opinion. So the argue both sides, as we can see in the example here, is phrased like this, discuss both points of view and give your own point of view. So for this, you might say some people argue A, but on the other hand, other people argue B. And each of these, of course, will be in their own paragraph and your own point of view will be in its own paragraph. Step three, plan your essay. So if it's an argument question, an argument essay is going to be opinion led. So your opinion is going to be the center of the whole essay. Uh, some people might not feel particularly strongly on an issue and they might instinctively feel like they want to say, well, I kind of agree or I partly agree. Now, if this was your first language, I would say that's fine. You can do that. Um, but when writing in English, especially if you are not a very strong writer, I think it's much better to take an either or approach. So either say yes or no. It's just going to make your writing much clearer and much easier to understand. Okay, now second one, if it's a discussion question, you're going to have to logically answer the question. And if it's a mixed question, of course, you're going to have to do both. Okay, now the introduction, paragraph one. Avoid using long memorized, memorized sentences. For example, recently there have been a lot of discussions about health and whether it's going to improve or not. In my opinion, I think blah, 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 blah. Using these kinds of phrases, like there have been a lot of discussion on issues where there isn't a lot of discussion, is not gonna help you get a good score. It just shows that you are copying someone else's sentences. Now, you can, of course, personalize your introduction because the task says, give reasons for your answers and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. So you can include specific references, personal references and personal commentary in your answers and in your introduction. And if you're slow or you're not a very confident writer, um, you can avoid the introduction by just writing a short introductory statement. For example, for this essay, I'm asked to discuss whether, and then you put the topic statement from the topic here. Now, sometimes the, uh, the tasks in the task two, in the writing task two, are a little bit overwritten. It can be a little difficult to understand exactly what it is that you need to focus on. So here we see two examples where you can distill the topic. Uh, we have the original 
Government investment in the arts, such as music and theater, is a waste of money. Governments must invest this money in public services instead. To what extent do you agree or disagree with the statement? So, if you distill the question or you distill the topic, you come up with this. Should the government invest money for the arts into public services instead? It just makes it easier uh, to plan your essay and to think about what approach you need to take to answer the question. Okay, when you write the big picture, the body, of course you need to use a formal style of writing. You, de you do need to use paragraphs. If you do not use paragraphs, you will be penalized for that. Now, the key elements of any good paragraph are unity. Each paragraph should have a central theme or a central topic, and there needs to be development. So your topic or central idea needs to be developed and explained in the supporting sentences. And then there's also the coherence. Your idea should be explained in a clear and logical way. Um, here we can see what the essay is going to look like. So we have the introduction. We have at least two body paragraphs, possibly a third. Uh, depending on your style and maybe also depending on the question because for example for those mixed type uh, essay questions where they ask you to discuss both views and then give your own um, this is where you will put the two views and body paragraph three is where you're going to put your view and then we have the conclusion okay signposting and topic sentences these are important to keep your essay on track on course uh, and you need to link these back to the topic issue uh, in the question otherwise your essay is going to go off track and make these topic sentences sound like reasons so if it's an argument essay you're going to write probably two supporting paragraphs if it's a mixed essay requirement you're going to be writing one supporting paragraph Okay, and then step six, continuing with the body, the small picture, getting down to the details, um, you need to vary the words that you use. So for example, if you are writing about coffee, don't repeat the word coffee so many times. You can use other words to refer back to this. For example, caffeine boost or refreshing beverage. And you need to vary the grammar that you are using. Um, this can be done, well, conjunctions are pretty easy, and then we have relative clauses and participial phrases. So here are some examples of relative pronouns that you can use, and this is the structure that you can use for participial phrases. Avoid 100% statements. So sweeping generalizations or absolute statements uh, are not true. So if you say that X always happens or X is definitely the cause of something, uh, it reduces the value of your argument. So you should be confident, but be careful in being 100% confident. And with regard to vocabulary, you need to use plurals and defined pronouns. So for example, for plurals, uh, when you are writing, let's say about healthcare, you're not going to be saying a patient, you're going to be referring to patients. And you're not going to be saying anyone in hospital, because this anyone here is an indefinite pronoun. So instead of anyone, use, for example, any patient. Okay, and then supporting your main point. Uh, when thinking about support for your argument, it's useful to consider issues like money, the environment, safety, health, lifestyle. And then you can of course also think of what-if scenarios and specific personal examples. Now the other side, um, you are not always required to discuss uh, the other side. Well, at least the task doesn't always ask you to discuss the other side, but you should, even if it's not 
required of you. Um, it just shows that your essay is a mature piece of writing if you do consider the other side. Okay, so here we have uh, an argument about uh, transport by air. So supporters of this development argue that transport by air may have opened up markets that were, pre that were previously inaccessible. This will be in paragraph three. This is where you introduce the other side. And then you counter argue the other side in the next paragraph. However, the damage that's done to the environment outweighs any possible benefits. Step nine, concluding the essay. A conclusion should not simply be you repeating what you said before. You need to rephrase the opinion, not just repeat the same words. If you run out of time or you are not a very confident writer, you may consider not including a summary at all or not including a conclusion at all. If you do have enough time and you are a confident writer, you can end your writing with suggestions, a prediction, or a warning. And of course, step 10, if there's time left, check your work. So in future videos, we will look at all these steps. So as I said, in future videos, we will look at each step individually, and there will be a video for each step coming up in the future.